from Ball's Dick Condom 19A for Al Rondo, sponsored by Franklin Motors. Then we go to the 15th starting position, car number 47. The Fox Motorsports machine from Groton, it is driver Tom Fox. Starting 16th, it's the Anton's Bontendrick, number 66 for Cliff Stakey of Southington. Next comes car number 19 the H&H &H machine for driver Phil Rondo. Next up, it's Ricky Dyke in the 07 from Danbury. Followed by out of Norwich, the PM mechanical entry for Todd Stiles. Starting 22nd from Brookfield, kind of a 39 for Mad Dog, George Brissett. Then we round out the field with Tony Sylvester, Larry Charbonnier, Herb Bennett Sr., Dave Wheeler, Tony Mordino, Bob Sierra, John Steiner, and Conrad Cody. The pace car heads to the infield. Green flags are out, and the first feature event of the afternoon is underway. Heading for turn one, car number 09. It is Ricky Breen as the Caruso machine falters. Everybody makes it around that car number 12, and they head down that long back straightaway. Ricky Breen out in front with car number 09. Deep into turn number three, Tom Carey Jr. and Bob Ladura during battle for that second position. Then it is Chalmers in the 71. The eight of Chuck Zitkarski, Wade Gagner, Danny Delina, and a cast of pounds in back to turn one. They continue to run side by side, but Ricky Breed able to open up a little room off of Bob and Dura, but now problems erupt up in turn number two. It's car number five. That's Dan Delaney's car, along with car number seven, the Mayberry Associates number seven. All in trouble, but everybody now appears to be all right, except for the seven. And Wayne Gagner remains up against the Amco. Now he gets it refired. A tough break. Mission. Pace car off the speedway. Green is back out. Green picks up right where he left off, out in front of the field. And Bob Madura in the 0-2, right in that number. And Chuck Zinkar, Connor Green, joins the challenge up in turn number one. Car number five, Junior. Of Tom Carey running in that fourth spot has Ricky Shorn breathing fire on his back bumper as they work down the back straightaway. The field opens up a little bit of daylight as they run nose to tail off turn number four down to complete lap number two. Madura takes a peek to the inside. Uh, Ricky Green is the first one to cross the line from car number zero nine. Some of the drivers taking life a little bit easy in the early stages of this 50 lap event, but look, they're three wide off the turn. Tom Tag out of Oxford, Massachusetts, running to the high side of the Brothers Rondo and was finally drop kicked back that one spot. So they run side by side. The Rondos off the turn. Here they come down the front straightaway, headed towards the front. Cars like the 14 of Leo Adams, the 41 of Brian McCarthy, and one of the real serious contenders early in the event is out early. The 38th, the Tiger League construction machine of Tony Sylvester, always a threat. Today will not be. Continue with the action up front as Ricky Sean down on the inside of Chucky Zantarski smoking the tires off the turn looking for that number two position. Sean is on the move. Moved up into the third spot. Ed Chalmers, car number 71, is right on his back bumper running fourth. And Bob Madura has been drop kicked all the way back to the number five position. But it's Ricky Green in car number 09 maintaining control at the present time as the eight of Chucky Zentarski is less than a car length behind. Nose to tail. They work off that fourth turn with Ricky Sean again. Applying the pressure here in the start finish line, but to no avail at this point. They continue to work their way around the half mile here. Ricky Green this morning says, Russ, we're experiencing the luck of the Irish. We're starting on the pole and I feel good today. And thus far with five laps up on the Winston Racing Series scoreboard, Ricky Breen has every right to feel that way, but he doesn't want to hiccup because right behind him is the eight of Zinkarski and the eight X of John Boat. Veterans of this division and guys who really know how to get the job done. Well, Jimmy Ward in car number 22 and the 66 of Cliff Stakey, along with one of the Rondos. We're not quite sure if it's the 19 or the 19A. Now moving up into the top 10, looking to contend for the lead. In the meantime, back up front, Chucky Zentarski sticks the nose of Conover 8 down on the inside, and it's a dead heat at the line. It's Zentarski on the inside, Ricky Green on the outside. Seven laps are shown on the scoreboard, and Chucky Zentarski is wasting no time taking over the advantage of this program. In the meantime, Ricky Shawn able to follow suit. He runs in the second spot, but he looks for the number one position. Sentarski equal to the challenge, holds off. Ricky Shawn, for the moment at least, he'll be your leader off the fourth turn down to complete lap number eight. So it's Sentarski, Shawn, Green, and Thomas at this point. One of the drivers to keep an eye on, car number 22, he's got his hands on the grid, and Bob Ladura gets way up in the two leads. He's able to hold on to the race car, but it costs him about eight spots in the process. 
We began to talk about Jimmy Ward. He started 10th on the grid. He has now worked himself into the seventh position and is moving forward. Meanwhile, it is Zentarski and Sean out in front. Chalmers runs in the third spot, followed by the 09 of Breen. Then comes the 66 of Cliff Stakey and the 19 of Rondo. That's how things shape up with nine laps up on the scoreboard. This time around, we'll go for 10. We'll have 10 down at 40 left to run. Bill Rondo working his way through traffic rather nicely at this point, sits in the number six position right in front of the 22 of Jimmy Ward. Brian McCarthy also working his way up with car number 41. We've got John Steiner in the 66 losing power in turn number four. Looks as though he'll get out of harm's way as he limps into the infield. Zentarski in the meanwhile in car number eight opened up a car length advantage over Ricky Sean in the third place car number 71 of Ted Chalmers now falling off the pace somewhat as the two front runners looking to open up advantage here with 11 laps on the scoreboard but still a long way to go. And there's over $7,000 up for grabs here today with 1200 going to the winner and that is what it's all about. Right now both Zentarski and Sean feel like they are about to begin counting and they want to count that money. But in the meantime, the caution flag comes out. Apparently, there is some debris on the racetrack. And we will go to caution to take care of that problem. Action once again. Pace car to the infield. The pace quickens in turn number three. Zendarski has the edge off the fourth turn, but Ricky Sean right on his back bumper, not about to be shaken loose. Down across the line, Zendarski for Ricky Sean quickly. Tarski wisely closes the door between the turns and remains out front off turn number two. Ted Chalmers now has to look in his rear view mirror only to see the 66 of Cliff Stakey. He's been very quickly moving his way towards the front, but we've got a three-car battle developing for the number five position. It's Brian McCarthy on the inside, Rondo in the middle, and Ricky Green to the outside. Rondo takes the advantage to grab off that fifth spot. Brian McCarthy has worked his way up to sixth. Ricky Breen now runs back in seventh, and here comes Jimmy Ward looking for that position off turn number two. Al Rondo in the 19A, still running in the top ten as Tommy Fox works his way towards the front. This is going to be a battle of magnificent proportions before we get to the checkered flag as all of the heavy hitters now working towards the front of the field. There's no two ways about that, and a lot of the action is not only in the front, but in the back as well. Speaking of the front, look at that battle between Zentarski and Sean. Sean, who is also working on an open wheel modified for the season, feels very, very comfortable behind the wheel of car number 8X, the Oldsmobile. But we've got problems over between turn three and four as Ricky Green goes around with the 09. And you can see some sheet metal damage done there. Tom Tag in the three takes a ride down through the infield, as does the seven. Wheeler's number 14 also headed back in. So it seems as though just when everything was really starting to heat up, everything kind of came unglued from apart. But right now, pace got to the infield as the field quickens the pace between the turns, and we go back to green flag action with Santarski once again out in front of the field as they come down across the line. Ricky going right there on the back bumper just as they were prior to the caution coming out. And Brian McCarthy takes his time to pull alongside of Ted Chalmers as they battle for the number three position off turn number two. Bill Rondo playing a little bumper tag down the back straightaway, caught in behind Ted Chalmers, and that could have cost him a spot or two as Jimmy Ward takes a peek to the outside of car number 19 as they continue side-by-side -side action across the line. Absolutely incredible run from Brian McCarthy. There goes Rick Sean down on the inside. Sean waiting patiently in the wings. Picked up his opportunity when it was offered, and he jumped right out in the lead. The Bradford Motors machine out in front, followed by the captain's galley, number eight, the CSC trucking machine, Rojo trucking, fits machine for Brian McCarthy, runs in the next spot. And then it is the barriers of the Carnival 19 for Rondo. Those first four automobiles running bumper to bumper around the half mile with Rick Shaw, Carnival 8X, out in front. Jimmy Ward currently running in the sixth spot and behind Ted Chalmers. He's got Al Rondo running seventh as they continue to work their way to catch up with the leaders. Still plenty of time remaining, but Ricky Sean looking to add to his advantage as a couple of car lengths open air between himself and Chucky Zentarski. 
But Tentowski grabs off about half of that real estate up between the turns, but only to lose it down the back straightaway. Todd Styles in car number 43, a Chrysler product, now pulls off the speedway into the infield as the battle continues here off the fourth turn with Brian McCarthy smoking the tires in an effort to catch the leaders. And Bill Rondo in car number 19 pulling alongside battle for the third position. A little bumper tag played between Rondo and McCarthy a lap or two ago, and now this time Rondo drops to the inside, just motors right on ahead, and Bill Rondo is headed towards the front, but McCarthy driving almost dirt track style off the fourth turn, lights up that right rear one more time, but it's to no avail, and Rondo has the car hooked up nicely down in the lower groove, and Rondo now securely in that third spot. It appears that Rondo has the horsepower down the straightaway, and McCarthy closes in just a bit through the turns, so we'll have to keep our eye on that battle as they continue to run, trying to catch the leader, being Ricky Sean in the 8X. Battle Royal in the center of the racetrack as the pack tightens up a bit. Some of the heavy hitters still stuck in traffic after the visit to the pit area. Once again, trying to catch up with the leader as we have 20 laps. Joan has complete on the scoreboard. Jimmy Ward just had an opportunity handed to him, but he was not able to turn it into pay dirt as he's got in a little bit deep into turn number one. Meanwhile, Al Rondell looks to the outside of Ted Chalmers and tries to pick up position number five. It is Al Rondo, car number 19A, working his way around the hot side. He takes over the calmer spot, dropping his head back one, and here comes Danzelina in the five to challenge Jimmy Ward. Four top cars have now opened up quite an advantage over the remainder of the field. Al Rondo in car number 19A runs in the fifth spot. He's got a little daylight to make up on the leaders as Sean Zentoski, Rondo, and McCarthy have pulled away and run away from the pack. With only 42 laps on the scoreboard. We're nearing the halfway marker, and Ricky Sean at the moment seems to be in control. He's got about three car lengths over Zentoski. Zentoski, on the other hand, has his hands full as he continues to battle with Phil Rondo for the runner-up spot, and that gives the leader a little more breathing room as Ricky Sean able to pick his spot on the racetrack. A real battle now for the second spot. Here goes Rondo down to the inside of Zentoski, and Zentoski really close to the right rear, but it's to no avail as Rondo, who has been such a dominant factor in this division the last couple of seasons, rolls ever so slowly through the pack, working his way towards the front. He now has the leader in his sights as 24 laps are posted up on the scoreboard next time around. The halfway marker will be displayed for Rick Sean. Trouble in car number 71. Smoke coming from out underneath the rear bumper of Ted Chalmers' automobile at the present time. As he heads into turn number two, the smoke getting heavier on each and every circuit. He allows Jimmy Ward to move on by. Next is car number five. Mandelina makes the move. Wade Gagner in car number seven working the inside as he's looking to catch up with the leaders. But in the meantime, back up front, still Ricky Thorne in command. Bill Rondo running second about three car lengths behind. Zentarski has dropped off the pace somewhat at the present time. He's about five or six car lengths behind the front two automobiles. Then we pick up Brian McCarthy's number 41 in the 19A of Al Rondo. Those are your five front runners. We're one lap past the halfway marker. 24 laps to go and anything is yet to happen. No two ways about that, especially right up front. Rondo now has closed right in on the rear bumper of Rick Shaw. Sean is trying to put together two operations, maintain the late model car number 8X, and also get his open wheel modified. Nose of the 19 down low. Sean closes the door on him, and Rondo has to back off just a bit. Sean absolutely slammed the door off of two, but then opened it wide open. Here comes Rondo to the inside. Rondo holds tight. Sean brings it down low. They run door handle to door handle, and as they exit turn number four, a brand new leader. It is Bill Rondo out in front as Larry Cody spins through the infield on the back straightaway. This could be an interesting situation, but Cody does refire the car. We remain under green, and Rondo heads for turn number three, the brand new leader. Rondo started way back in the 17th position on the original starting grid. Ricky Sean had started ninth, so both of these drivers have had to fight traffic to get up front. And Tarski is holding on to third, is a distance behind at the present time as Al Rondo gets by Brian McCarthy. Rondo now running in the fourth spot with Brian McCarthy back in fifth. But meanwhile, back up front, Bill Rondo cannot open up any daylight over Ricky Sean. Uh, less than one car lane separates the top two competitors, but after that we have to look 
a little ways back to pick up the eight of Chucky Z Carsey. 30 laps on the scoreboard. We've got a car in trouble off turn number two. It looks again to be the 89, the 88 of Conrad Cody. Both cars are identically painted except Conrad's is in green. Larry's is in blue and Conrad re-fires. We stay under green with your leaders continuing to battle off the fall turn. But again, it'll be Phil Rondo in car number 19, first across the line, but he's got Ricky Shaw right on his back bumper. Problems with another Cody machine, car number 89, this one, the Larry Cody entry, also in trouble and heading in. A couple of the cars that have called it a day, the 07 of Rick Dyke, the 69 of Larry Charbonnier. We mentioned Todd Stiles, John Steiner, and Ted Chalmers. Here comes car number 89 for Larry Cody. He, too, is calling it an afternoon. Continue with the action hot and heavy in the middle of the pack. But out front, the leaders are looking to open up a little daylight. Brian McCarthy continues to cruise out there in car number 41. He's right behind Al Rossi and Wheeler, losing the bumper and a rear tire on that automobile right in front of the leaders. As you can see, one of his tires working his way down across the start-finish line. So Dave Wheeler, in his first outing in 1988, comes to a halt just off the fourth turn, losing the right rear tire on the automobile. Some real heads up driving to Joe by so many of the competitors right behind him as they were faced for full tilt. How do you go about it? Where do you go? Well, they all managed to find a way around. We'll have to check with Pat Evans outside. Ricky Shaw in car number 8X has different ideas, and we're going to await as the pace car pulls off turn number three. Chris Hopkins addresses the field off turn number three, has the green in hand. He's waving the green to the lead automobile as Phil Rondo once again up front as he crosses the strike. Ricky Shaw and Phoenix right at his back bumper. And Tarsi holding on to that third spot. And it looks as though the 19A of Al Rondo has that fourth position as they work down the back straightaway. So it's Phil Rondo out front. Al Rondo running in the fourth spot with the identical automobiles. Leo Adams in car number 14 working his way currently holds the fifth position as Wade Gagner in car number seven holds on to the number six position as they cross the strike this time by. A couple of drivers to keep an eye on. Car number 47, Tom Fox, seems to be hooked up very, very nicely. Tom Tag working his way back through the pack. And Leo Adams in car number 14 also headed toward the front. Those are some of the cars to keep an eye on as Sean now takes a look underneath Rondo. He can't quite make the move, but there's no two ways about it. Bill Rondo knows that he is there and probably will for the next 15 laps as they exit turn number two with Sean down on the inside. Rondo hooked up on the high side of the racetrack. They head to turn three, deep into the turn they go. It is Sean on the inside. Rondo tucks it down low, making that a nice tight sandwich. And off the turn, it's a virtual dead heat, but Rondo has the advantage at the line by a radiator cap. Both cars equally match at the present time. Sean stays down low. Rondo a bit high through the turn, straightens it out down the back straightaway. They're dead even on turn number two. Halfway down, it's Rondo with a half of those out front, but Ricky Shaw not about to give up as of yet as they continue the side-by-side -side action off the fourth turn. Sean has the edge as they come off the fourth turn, down across the line. He's got a half a car length lead, but now makes it a whole car length up in turn number one. He moves high, Rondo moves low. Rondo back out front off turn number two. So Phil Rondo regains the lead. Ricky Shaw not about to give up, but look who's joined the battle. Chucky Zentarski plays a little bumper tack. Here comes the 19A of Al Rondo. It's a four-card dogfight off the fourth turn. They jockey for a position, but Phil Rondo able to maintain that number one position. Absolutely incredible racing. Now, Sean has found the inside groove as they swap positions back and forth. Rondo gets a good bite off of two. He's able to jump back out in front, but he's really got to hold a low line. The car seems to be getting just a little bit loose, and Sean wants to take full advantage of that as he looks to make his rules down to the bottom side of the racetrack. Sean down deep, Rondo holds it in. Rondo gets almost sideways in turns one and two. It is gonna be a real battle for the next 10 and one half laps here at Stafford. Rondo has been equal to every challenge but one. If you'll recall, Ricky Sean got by him on one instance. Rondo had a battle back to regain the lead for Ricky Sean. Less than a half a car length short of the lead at the line. Now stays side by side with Rondo up in turn number one. Side by side, door hands. The door handle action off turn number two as Ricky Sean is down on the inside. Rondo pulls away on the high side. But look at Al Rondo. He's battling with Zentarski. 
the four cars are separated by less than two car lengths. They're smoking the tires, exchange a little sheet metal in the little paint off the turn. It's now 41 laps complete, a nine lap battle to the checkers as Phil Rando sidetracks it through turn number one. And Ricky Sean takes the room available to his best advantage and pulls alongside once again. Rondo to the outside, Ricky Sean to the inside. Here comes brother Al Rondo as the two battle it out off the fourth turn. They better keep their eyes on the rear view mirror as Al Rondo definitely is reeling in the leaders. $1,200 going to the winner of this feature event. It is a $350 slide back to second place. And that's why both of these drivers are driving their hearts and souls out here this afternoon trying to pick up not only the laurels of a Spring Sizzler weekend win, but the $1,200 first prize money. And at this point, it is Rondo. Sean not giving up an inch as they head back for turn one. Rick Sean on the inside. It is Phil Rondo up on the outside. Al waits in the wing. Both of the third, fourth place competitors looking to catch up with the leaders, smoking the tires, trying to cut down at it on the advantage enjoyed by the two leaders as Ricky Sean making his move off the fourth turn. Slip slide off the turn into dead heat at the line as Bill Rondo and Ricky Sean continue their battle for the number one position. Supremacy is only six laps away. 44 event complete. Rondo definitely gets the fight off turn number two. He pulls out in front of Ricky Sean. Everybody hot on the binders. Sideways through the turn. Now they're three wide with Al Rondo on the inside chasing his brother down. And that was a costly move for Ricky Sean as he drops back to the third spot. And Tentoski maintains the number four position. It ain't over till it's over. And Sean with a little payback tap to Al Rondo. Here comes Sean now. He tries to dive to the inside of Al. He does, but Al slams the door as they head into turn number three. Sean says, play that game with me and we'll fix you there, fella. Around goes Al Rondo in car number 19. He re-fires. We remain under green. And right now, Sean has a long, long way to go if he is to make up the difference between his position now and that of leader Bill Rondo. So it is Bill out in front with car number 19, Rick Sean, with only four more laps to go to try to make up that distance. And Chuck Zintarski glued right to his rear bumper. Wade Gagner moves in. And Leo Adams, Dan Delgado around. Bill Rondo, car number 19, Rick Sean in the 8X, Chuck Zintarski, Wade Gagner, and Leo Adams. Those are the cars that make up the top spot in this National Park Peddler 50 lap feature event. Heading for home through turns three and four, pretty much by himself. It is car number 19 from Baltic, Connecticut. It is Bill Rondo, followed by Rick Sean, Chuck Zintarski, Wade Gagner, Leo Adams, da Dan Delina, Tom Fox, Art Caruso, Tom Tagg, Tom Carey, Bob Fedora, Al Rondo, the 88 of Conrad Cody, the 09 of Ricky Breen, and the 64 of Herb Bennett Sr. That, of course, is unofficial controls. Wade Gagner finished in the fourth position, and rounding out the top five was car number 14 for Leo Bim Adams. And what a battle that one was for the National Parts Peddler 50-lap feature event with $1,200 going to the race winner, and that being car number 19 for Bill Rondo. How about a nice round of applause for Phil Rondo? H Auto Machine, Franklin Motors, car number 19 for Phil Rondo. Phil, first of all, congratulations. Pick up the hat. Compliments of Corky Stockham. How about a good deep breath? You got another one down there? Let me tell you, he's a huffing and puffing down here. 50 laps is a long way. How about it, ladies and gentlemen, as he gets a moment to grab a breath? Phil Rondo picking up his first race of the year. Corky Stockman is here in Victory Lane. He's still gasping for air down here, although he's got a smile on his face. The photo session now taking place. Well, a whole lot more this year. Uh, I'd like to thank uh, Barry Associates, H&H &H Auto Machine for the motor. They build a hell of a motor. Uh, Central Auto for parts and cars, Franklin Motors. And Rojo Trucking, CSC Sand and Gravel. Most of all, I want to thank Alan Cole for making the car so beautiful.
Well, beautiful it was, but right now, you can see the scars of the battle on both sides of the automobile. Phil, you started way back, somewhere around the 17th spot. Didn't take you too long, you'd picked your way to the front. But some of those heavy hitters were still causing a little battle behind you. Did that help or hurt you at the time you got up front? Well, we were pushing the car, but I think we could have went a little bit faster if they tried to go even faster. Well, you know, Ricky, Sean got by you once. You were able to get the lead back. Was there any particular move you looked to get around Sean with? Yeah, I let him go in really hard and let him drift up and then I get back under him. You know, you had both horsepower and you had the handling on the automobile. How about when you get down to the smaller tracks? You're going to use that same automobile or have you got another car in the garage? Oh, we got another car in the garage and this is the motor for the Waterford Speedball. Corky, you've got a special presentation. I don't see the driver here at this time. Would you like to make the announcement to the crowd who picks up that $100 bill? Second place finisher. It was a tremendous race for both of you and I was really proud to sponsor this event. Well, Corky has got a $100 bill waiting for Ricky Sean, as in Corky's estimation, he put on the most exciting race. So Ricky will be presented that $100 bill. Phil Rondo, we've got another trophy, says Corky, of two beautiful trophies right here in Victory Lane. You know, 18 victories last season. What's the number prescribed by Phil Rondo for 1988? As many as we can. <laughs> Once again, ladies and gentlemen, your feature winner, Phil Rondo, winning the first late model feature event of the 1988 season, all sponsored by Corky Stockham's National Pots. Brian Al Ferry, Brother Al now joins Brother Phil. Al was right in contention, but finished back in the standings. The Astis Pomani now being held by Phil Rondo as the crew happily enjoys themselves here in Victory Lane. <laughs>